Hi, my name is Damon Pham, and this summer I worked on developing new algorithms for gene set enrichment analysis. So what is enrichment? Well, in some ways, it's kind of like doing a Google search. One of the reasons I use Google is to find the title of a song I heard on the radio. I'll put in a set of words I remember, press search, and then Google will give me a ranked list of websites which it thinks are relevant. In this case, I was able to identify my song even though one of the words I put in actually isn't in the song. In the same way, enrichment takes in a set of genes and outputs a ranking of annotated gene sets, and these annotations can correspond to a variety of things. This is helpful to scientists because they can input a set of genes related to an experiment they're working on and then learn more about the biology that connects the set of genes. Like doing a Google search, enrichment should be tolerant of some level of noise. So here's a more formal diagram. We have our input list of genes and the annotated gene set database. And then what enrichment does is identify sets in that database which are overrepresented. So what we want to do is improve enrichment so that we can get better results. These are the algorithms I looked at. The first is the Fisher's exact test. And this is by far the most popular method because it's very simple. We form our contingency table between the input gene set and the set of interest. We take the cell counts, compute a p-value, and then this p-value becomes our enrichment score. This is nice, but the problem with Fisher's is that it assumes genes behave independently. And we all know genes interact. So if we can take this interaction into consideration, theoretically there's a lot of room for improvement. The first new method I looked at are impurity scores, and these come from the domain of machine learning. Um, the inputs are actually the same as Fisher's, but they're just different formulas. So I also looked at actual machine learning techniques, and these required two steps. The first step was to build a classifier that would assign the label of belonging to my input gene set or not to each gene in the gene set library, the samples, based on their features, which would be their membership in the sets in the library. After I build this classifier, I can extract what's called the feature importances. And the interpretation of this depends on the algorithm at hand, but basically, the more important features would be more relied on by the algorithm. So I can interpret this as the enrichment score. And because these algorithms consider combinations of features at a time, they're implicitly taking into account gene correlations. Finally, I returned to the Fisher's exact test, but this time added the second variable of an aggregated correlation score between the two gene sets. So I would reward a gene set pair with high correlation between each other. Alright, so I have all these different algorithms, and the way I benchmark them is by using these three libraries. So each library records transcription factor perturbations, followed by an expression profiling either with ChIP-seq or microarrays. And what I hypothesized is that different experiments in different libraries that corresponded to the same transcription factor should have some agreement with one another. So what I would do is I would take a pair of libraries at a time, and then I would use the gene sets in one library to perform enrichment into the other library. So in this example, I have transcription factor 1, I get its gene set, and then I perform enrichment into creeds. And what I get is a ranking of the terms in creeds, the transcription factors. And what I get here is a good result because the transcription factor 1 terms in creeds were highly ranked, and this is the same as the input term I used. So I'll do this for all the transcription factors that are matching between the libraries, and for each one I'll get a ranking, and how I aggregate all these rankings is that I create a bridge plot. So this thing is kind of like a cumulative histogram turned a little sideways so that it starts and ends at zero. Basically what I do is the graph moves up each time it hits a matching TF, and it goes down at a constant rate. So a good algorithm, because the matching TFs should be ranked very highly, the graph will shoot up very high and then go down, while a worse algorithm would have a bridge that looks shorter, flatter, or even negative. So here's an example of what a bridge plot looks like using actual data. I also use drug to gene libraries, but I won't discuss them in my presentation just for the sake of time. So here are my results with the transcription factor to gene libraries. Again, I have three, so that makes six pairs between them. Um, so here's the control and the Fisher's exact test. 
already I have some form of validation because I can see that ENCODE and CHIA agree with each other the most. And this makes sense because they're both chip-seek libraries, while CREEDS is a microarray library. So I'm just going to normalize the graphs from here on out so we can see the lines better. The impurity measures were really similar to the fissures. They did a little worse in two of the cases, but they really improved when going from CREEDS to ENCODE. Random Forest had a slight improvement when going from ENCODE to CREEDS, but it didn't do that well in the other cases. I looked at other machine learning methods, but in order to kind of narrow down the list, I zoomed into the top 10% of ranks. So just like we only look at the few pages of Google search, the few top pages, um, the top 10 percentile of ranks are going to be the most important. So from here I was able to narrow down the list to random forests, extra trees, and the two types of gradient boosting. So I think these algorithms might be very promising with some hyperparameter tuning. This is the best result I got this summer. I combined the Fisher p-value with the random forest feature importance into a mathematical formula and I was able to get a result that kind of beat the Fishers in three of the six cases. Um, and previously where random forest did very horribly, like the box in yellow, my new method only loses out by a little bit. And I can confirm this by again zooming into the top 10 percentile. Finally, the Arches4 correlation idea didn't work as well. So I kind of backtracked and I found out that the matching transcription factor gene sets pairs, um, they didn't even have a different distribution of correlation scores between the non-matches. The distributions, as you can see, look pretty much the same. So this is probably not an idea worth exploring further. But things that I would like to do in the future are um, come up with a way to automate hyperparameter tuning for the machine learning methods, um, combine the different methods in different ways, and finally, it would be nice to formally quantify significance between the different methods instead of relying on a qualitative observation of the bridge plots. So yeah, that's my presentation. Um, I'd like to thank Avi, Zichen, and Alex for mentoring me. Mount Sinai for hosting me and the NIH for funding. Thanks.